Hello and uh, welcome to Angle PLC's presentation to Biotech Showcase, January 2021. Normally I'd be presenting uh, in person in San Francisco, but as with all the other presentations, uh, this year it's a virtual presentation. I'm hoping that this will actually make the presentation uh, widely accessible to larger numbers of investors, uh, US investors than otherwise might have attended. And uh, to make the presentation accessible, I propose to have a relatively concise summary of the investment opportunity at the beginning uh, of the presentation. And then during the rest of the um, 30 minute period, uh, there will be a lot more detailed discussion. So people can uh, dive in and out of the slides as they want. The slides will actually be quite detailed in their content. Obviously, I won't um, present all of that information, but you can study that offline. And most importantly, we'll provide a contact email address for any investors that would like to get in touch and follow up with detailed questions uh, that they may have. Uh, we're particularly interested in bringing US investors into our stock and uh, have proactively uh, been pushing that over the last couple of years. And in fact, the two largest institutional investors in Angle PLC, notwithstanding the fact that we're currently London listed, um, are in fact US based um, major institutional investors. So we've been successful in achieving that. And uh, Angle's business is all about trying to transform cancer care through a liquid biopsy based on a simple blood test. A normal sort of uh, legal disclaimer. And now we can move into the presentation. So the, uh, the overall focus for Angle uh, relates to the fact that everybody, every patient's cancer is different. You imagine that three patients with breast cancer would all have the same disease, but in fact, they have the disease in the same part of their body, uh, but it's fundamentally different. And what happens is that the disease changes over time. So a treatment that might work initially will no longer work later and vice versa. And a treatment that works for one patient will not work for others. So it's really, really important to personalize cancer care and that's what Angle's um, approach is all about, enabling um, rapid real time decision making on how best to treat patients to improve their outcomes. And it also has the added benefit of reducing the healthcare expenditure by targeting treatments which are likely to work rather than, as currently is the case, a large amount of money being spent on treatments which are unsuccessful. And to achieve this, Angle has a patent protected product based solution for the liquid biopsy market, which is very unusual uh, compared to most players in this sector. So this is the overall summary of where we are at the moment. We've got very strong progress. Um, there's a lot of momentum within the business. We've got 36 peer reviewed publications covering 24 different cancer types that shows that our parsortics liquid biopsy can be successful in harvesting cancer cells from patient blood. And that critically, these cells can be analyzed uh, to provide meaningful information to guide treatment. Uh, we've made a lot of investment, both in terms of money and time in uh, progressing an FDA submission uh, for our parsortics platform, seeking the first ever FDA clearance for a product to separate cancer cells from patient blood for subsequent analysis. And we've successfully made that submission in September 2020, uh, and we're now in the midst of a substantive review by FDA. We believe that the prospect of FDA clearance is earliest in uh, Q2 of this current year. So um, by the end of June is the earliest opportunity for us to get an FDA clearance. And as I mentioned, uh, that will be the first ever FDA clearance for harvesting cancer cells for subsequent analysis. And the analysis is the key part of that statement. Uh, we're also progressing an ovarian cancer detection study, uh, which comes after two successful studies that we've already had. And this is a clinical verification study showing that our system can be used to detect the presence of ovarian cancer via a simple blood test. And we're progressing multiple corporate partnerships. So we see this technology as something that can unlock um, many, many different opportunities. And we want to partner with large companies to exploit that. We've got several conversations uh, in train at present. So investors often say, why, why invest now? Well, uh, there's, there's macro trends for a start, uh, large mega trends showing that um, 
the the idea of liquid biopsy is definitely here to stay in cancer treatment and it's a very large scale market opportunity that it, that is developing um, but there's also specifics relating to angle uh, we're moving forward very very fast uh, we're establishing two significant clinical laboratories one outside of philadelphia and the other one in the uk uh, which are being um, developed to be accredited so that they can process patient samples so that will really accelerate our business we're also developing a pharma services business uh, where um, cancer drug trials can utilize our pharmaceutic system to as a biomarker to improve the performance of those trials and, and bear in mind that the one key advantage of a liquid biopsy solution is that it can be repeated in a drug trial so you can uh, you can test the patient before during and after um, drug administration and you can't do that with a tissue biopsy obviously um, we're progressing corporate partnerships and we have a, a business model which is um, really really well differentiated in the sense that uh, we not only have uh, the ability to offer services as most others do in the liquid biopsy sector via the clinical laboratories i just mentioned but we also have a product and this is critical so a patent protected product that can be sold uh, worldwide to hospitals so that they can do tests in-house and that gives us a very leveraged uh, business um, opportunity and we're looking uh, to have the first mover advantage with the first ever FDA clearance for such a product and indeed there are key clinical be benefits uh, in using parsortics and looking at circulating tumor cells which are intact living cancer cells as opposed to what the most of the industry is doing which is looking at circulating tumor DNA known as ctDNA which is fragments of dead cancer cells those are limited uh, very much to uh, DNA and cannot look at RNA and protein expression so there are major advantages if you can get an actual cancer cell uh, for analysis so that that provides the uh, overall summary of the position and now I'm going to give um, a lot more detail on uh, the business and how it how it operates so um, the first thing to look at is that um, the parsortic system is addressing major flaws in current standard of care uh, and the flaws are as follows that you can the treatment is by and large driven by analysis of tissue biopsy analyzing cancer cells that have been cut out from the patient and the, the fundamental problem there is that you cannot uh, repeat those tests once the once the cancer has been cut out and the tissue has been cut out it, you can't do it a second time and that means you don't have an ongoing um, picture of what's happening as the cancer changes and that's why patients don't get uh, personalized cancer care we want to change that by providing a method uh, by which it is possible to get cancer cells on a repeat non-invasive easy approach so that those cells can be analyzed multiple times to make sure that the patient gets the right treatment during their care and it's very interesting if you look at breast cancer that the national um, cancer guidelines in the United States recommend a tissue biopsy for metastatic breast cancer, which is where we're seeking our first FDA clearance. Um, as soon as the secondary cancer site can be identified, that's what it means by metastatic, it's spread to a secondary place, there should be a tissue biopsy of that secondary location. However, such a biopsy is actually um, quite difficult to achieve. And in fact, over only about half of all metastatic breast cancer patients get a successful tissue biopsy of their secondary site. They may be too ill, the tumor is inaccessible, or there may be insufficient tissue. So the parsortics approach, which is a simple blood test and recovering cancer cells uh, from the blood samples for analysis, completely removes that problem. It means that all patients uh, can have a blood test, cancer cells can be obtained, and they can have a routine change to their treatment as is required to give them personalized cancer care. The market that we can address with this approach is enormous. Uh, it's been estimated by multiple different parties to be over 100 billion US dollars uh, in total. And that ranges everything from the detection of cancer in high risk groups to selection of therapy, different drug treatments, to assessing the treatment in the patient to make sure that it's being effective, and then actually monitoring patients in remission. So seeking to find uh, means of 
an early detection of a possible relapse so that they can have appropriate treatment. So there's a very, very wide range of opportunities once you can get the cancer cells. Uh, so Parsortix unlocks all of these markets and indeed does so across all the different cancer types. Uh, so far, over 24 different cancer types have been tested by major cancer centers using Parsortix and the system worked effectively for all of them. Um, in terms of longer term opportunities, uh, there's a big interest in early screening for cancer and we think that in the longer term uh, play that will actually emerge as quite effective because the circulating tumour cells are an indic indicator not just the presence of cancer but also of its aggressiveness as well. The, um, the circulating tumour cells which are the cells that um, travel in the blood from the primary tumour site uh, and then can land somewhere else and cause a secondary cancer uh, those, in fact, are the ones uh, that provide information on the aggressiveness of the cancer and the way that it's spreading. And importantly, the, the assessment and analysis of an intact cancer cell, a circulating tumour cell, is the closest proximity to a tissue biopsy, which is also um, intact cells. Uh, the big difference being, of course, that circulating tumour cell um, tests can be repeated as often as you want via a blood test, whereas a tissue um, biopsy can't. So with a circulating tumour cell, you can get the complete picture of the cancer. Uh, you can look at DNA, RNA and protein expression, just the same as you can with tissue. In contrast, however, the, um, most of the industry is focused on circulating tumour DNA. Um, this is um, known as ctDNA. This is fragments of dead cancer cells. Uh, so when a cancer cell dies, it uh, breaks into millions of pieces uh, and is in the bloodstream for a short period of time before being excreted. So those fragments can provide some information on DNA, uh, but they can't provide any information on RNA and protein expression. So it's only a partial picture. We see the two approaches, circulating tumour cells as, and ctDNA, as being complementary um, because the same blood tube of blood, the same blood sample from the patient, can be used to analyze both CTCs and CTDNA if you have a parasortic system uh, angles proprietary approach. And so we're seeking to partner with those involved in circulating tumor DNA in order to give them the added benefit of being able to investigate RNA and protein expression. Our te technology is actually very simple in, in, um, in concept. It is a microfluidic technology. Uh, what you see here is a, uh, a slide um, which uh, the blood flows inside that slide and um, the, the channels are um, closed at the end. So the blood has to go either left or right and that takes it up a um, series of steps which are in the microfluidic structure. And the blood cells, red and white blood cells, can go straight through the critical gap and flow away, whereas the cancer cells are larger and less compressible and they get held at the critical gap. And what this does is it enables a very small number of cancer cells. So there might be two cancer cells or there might be 10 or sometimes 100 cancer cells in amongst 10 billion blood cells in a tube of blood. It enables those cancer cells to be separated from the surrounding blood cells. Um, and we've got an automated instrument, uh, the Parsortix uh, instrument, which uh, enables that process to be, um, be run automatically. So the user adds the tube of blood to the middle of the instrument, hits go, and the machine will automatically, um, under control pressure uh, circumstance, push uh, the blood through the microfluidics, separate the cancer cells, and then the flow can be reversed and the uh, cancer cells uh, removed. And this is um, manufactured for us on contract by third parties uh, who have a, um, a large capacity to scale up um, as we require. Now I'm going to show a, um, an animation first and then a video of how this actually works. So what you're looking at there is a Parsortix cassette, the same size as a microscope slide and the blood flows inside that. And now you should be seeing the, um, the animation. As we zoom in, that's the inlet there. And then the blood flows down the channel, which is closed at the end and it has to go either left or right. So we're zooming in on the left hand side. And the animation here is showing red and white blood cells going up the staircase through the critical gap and flowing away. And the cancer cells shown as green here 
being held in the final gap. Very simple, easy process. And as I mentioned, we can reverse flow or the machine automatically reverses flow in order to recover those cells. So now to look at um, what I always think is a really exciting presentation, which is an actual patient's blood flowing within a parcel. It's cassette. This has been uh, videoed underneath a uh, microscope with 100x uh, magnification. So here you see on the left hand side the red and white blood cells streaming in. Those lines are the edges of the staircase as so going up the staircase. The light colored area is the critical gap. So that's a single cell deep, which is why it's light colored. And then down the bottom here is the exit channel. So the red and white blood cells are flowing away. And in a minute, you're going to see a single cancer cell. So here is a cancer cell, which is sitting on the final step. And the beauty of this is the blood continues to flow. It doesn't clog up um, and uh, it just very easily holds the cancer cells. And there they are, they're large cells on the final, uh, final critical gap. So this approach is a um, patented worldwide um, and multiple patents in the United States which are granted so that we, we own this technology. And it's a very, very neat, low cost and highly efficient way to recover cells when there's only one cancer cell in a thousand million blood cells, we can still recover those cells for analysis. So I mentioned earlier about the industry being primarily focused on fragments of dead cells. And, and the reason for that is they don't have a parasitic. Everybody would much rather have a real cell for analysis. It's just they don't have the technology capable of extracting those cells from blood because it's technically enormously challenging because there are so few cells. We've solved that technical challenge and that opens up a massive market opportunity, as I'm about to explain. Uh, now, just so we know, this is um, something that has been well characterized by the industry, by, by uh, cancer centers. There are now 36 peer reviewed publications from world leading cancer centers using this independently uh, in their own labs and publishing their results. There have been seven separate studies that compare parsortics against the legacy cell search system and show in every case that uh, parsortics outperforms cell search and has some key advantages. Um, and on top of that, um, this system is ideally suited for capturing circulating tumor cell clusters, which are clumps of cancer cells um, uh, circulating in the blood as a group. And that they've been shown to be highly metastatic. And there are some leading researchers that believe that the spread of cancer, and remember that over 90% of patients who die of cancer die of the metastatic spread of their disease, not their primary cancer. Uh, that these circulating tumor cell clusters are absolutely critical to the speed of spread. And uh, the parasitic system has pretty much unique advantages in being able to get hold of those circulating tumor cell clusters as well. Um, I mentioned that we put a lot of effort into uh, an FDA uh, submission for parasitics. Actually, that's over five years of work uh, and a great deal of money has been put uh, towards this. Uh, we processed over 10,000 samples um, in uh, pursuit of, of an FDA clearance. And the great news is that uh, um, the uh, clinical studies were led by MD Anderson, uh, together with three other world, world leading US cancer centers. And we've already announced that we had positive results um, in terms of the ability to capture cancer cells for a significant proportion of, of breast cancer patients. Um, the FDA submission has been made in relation to metastatic breast cancer, but that is only the start. Once we have that clearance, we intend to expand that to all solid tumor cancer types over time. Uh, so as I mentioned in the introduction, we are now in substantive review with FDA. So the documentation that we submitted has been accepted and uh, we're awaiting um, a full dialogue with FDA on our submission. Uh, we believe that gives us the prospect of an FDA clearance, which would be the first of its kind. Uh, in the earliest time is towards the end of Q2 this year. Uh, we've processed over 15,000 samples. We submitted 400 uh, technical reports and documents. Now we followed a Q submission process. So we had several Q submission meetings with FDA, the most recent of which um, resulted in a face-to-face -face meeting in January of last year. Um, where we reviewed uh, results and we, we sought to identify remaining technical questions that FDA may have. We've indeed 
found a number of areas where they wanted further work done, and that has already been um, prepared and was submitted in the full submission made in September, um, late September last year. And obviously the, uh, the FDA clearance would be a major validation for our business. The commercial pathway we believe will open up uh, post an FDA clearance. Uh, we've already got sales of circa a million dollars per annum from translation uh, to translational researchers um, in cancer research. We expect that to expand dramatically post FDA clearance and also with uh, sample to answer solutions that we're developing uh, to make it easy for the users to do the downstream analysis of the cancer cells once they've achieved them. We've got a big push to expand our business into pharma services, uh, where the pharmaceutical system will be used in cancer drug trials as a biomarker, and I'll explain that in more detail. We've got a product-led strategy, and once we've got FDA clearance, we'll be able to sell um, the parasitic system for use by hospitals and clinical laboratories in treating patients. And uh, importantly, we're setting up our own clinical laboratories as an accelerator and demonstrator, which will, I, I will also explain. Uh, the clinical labs that we're establishing are focused on pharma services. So um, firstly, and then secondly, as an accelerator and demonstrator for new clinical use, i.e. for patients. Um, the idea here is to demonstrate opportunities for the wider industry to adopt. So Angle wants to work with large scale clinical laboratories to adopt and utilize our technology. Um, nevertheless, we think that we can accelerate our commercialization and generate early revenues by having our own clinical laboratories. Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, two being established, one in the United States and one in the UK. The UK one will be up and running within the next one to two months. The US one will be up and running at roughly the end of March or early April. Um, both labs will then be accredited, which would probably take another two quarters to get accreditation. But in the meantime, we expect to be generating revenues from the use in pharmaceutical uh, drug trials. And the pharmaceutical uh, drug trials market is a very large market. If you take just one element of it, which is immunotherapy, the, um, there's a very large market of selling immunotherapy drugs uh, for treatment of cancer, approximately $22 billion of revenues at the moment for the pharma companies, growing extremely fast, over 40% per annum. And the reason this is growing is because uh, these new drugs can stimulate the patient's own immune system to attack the cancer. Uh, and can essentially educate the immune system so that it can work out how the cancer has been evading um, attack. And this, and this can have some very, very good results uh, for some patients. The problem is that it's only about one in five or maximum one in two patients who will respond uh, to these drugs, and they're very expensive. Um, approximately $170,000 per patient. Uh, every patient that has them is likely to suffer side effects and yet only one in five will respond. So there's a huge need for a biomarker to identify which patients will respond. That improves patient outcomes and reduces healthcare spend. But immediately there's an opportunity for the pharma companies to adopt a biomarker like um, Parsortics in its trials. And there are over, well, there are circa 1400 active clinical trials running, uh, which are focused on pd one program death ligand one. And uh, unfortunately, there's no good biomarker to determine the response to these pdl one immune checkpoint inhibitors. The tissue biopsies have been used, uh, but unfortunately, they're taken at primary diagnosis of the patient, whereas these drugs are deployed later um, and when the cancer is much more advanced, and therefore the tissue biopsies are out of date. Uh, pdl one is a protein expressed on the cancer cell, and therefore the um, CTDNA does not work because remember CTDNA is limited to DNA analysis. It cannot do protein analysis and PDL1 is a protein. So the great thing is that three different independent cancer centers have shown parsortics can be used to capture cancer cells from patients and then assess the presence of the protein PDL1 on those cancer cells. And one of the three cancer centers has actually shown some pilot data that this PDL1 expression is aligned with the likely response of the patient uh, and could potentially be a predictive marker of which patients will respond. 
So in-house, Angle has put a lot of effort in and continues to develop an assay for PDL1. Um, as you can see from this slide, that we think the market opportunity just in the clinical trials for new cancer drugs, this is not including treating patients, um, is, is over 1 billion US dollars per annum. And we believe that we are uniquely positioned to address that market. So it's a major area of focus for us once we have our clinical lab set up. Uh, the pharma services uh, companies want their um, samples to be analyzed in a clinical lab, hence we need the clinical laboratories. The breast cancer focus of our um, FDA submission addresses a very large market. The breast cancer market for parsortics could be as much as $4 billion per annum. As I already mentioned, the NCCN National Cancer Guidelines in the United States um, mandate a tissue biopsy for metastatic breast cancer patients, which really just highlights how important it is to get uh, more accurate, up-to-date information on what's happening to the cancer to guide treatment, notwithstanding that metastatic tissue biopsies are highly invasive, um, general anaesthetic, and the patient may well be in hospital for several days afterwards. And often um, the, the tissue biopsy cannot be done at all. Um, so for example, if the metastatic spread has been to the brain, the brain metastasis was unlikely to have a tissue biopsy unless it's part of a, um, a surgical response to the disease. So over half of metastatic breast cancer patients do not have successful biopsies. Our FDA submission is being designed to demonstrate that an alternative approach is a simple blood test uh, with parsortics and able to get hold of the cancer cells and do all the same analysis that you would do with a cancer cell from a tissue biopsy. Um, and on top of the obvious benefit to patients, it's a reduction in costs. On average, it costs $16,000 for every tissue biopsy for a metastatic breast cancer patient. Um, and obviously, we could sell our test at significantly lower than $16,000 uh, and make an, a, a, a very good return. We're also progressing an ovarian cancer uh, test. This combines not only our parsodic system for harvesting cancer cells from the patient blood, but also a, a very um, highly sensitive molecular analysis platform called High Seed Ziplex, which we acquired three years ago um, and is the basis of our Toronto operation. Uh, so combining the parsodic system to get the, the ovarian cancer cells out of the blood and then the High Seed Ziplex system to detect their presence enables us to have a highly sensitive um, approach to identifying ovarian cancer. So we're pioneering this um, for a test for women with a known pelvic mass. So they've got an abnormal pelvic mass, which requires surgery um, in order to give them a blood test before their surgery to triage them as to whether they need a specialist cancer surgeon for their operation or whether they can um, just have a, a local general surgeon and, and not have to have a rush to have their surgery completed. And this is really, really important because the um, the, light, the mortality rate for ovarian cancer patients who do not get a cancer surgeon is much, much higher uh, than those who, who get the appropriate treatment. Whilst, of course, um, referral to a specialist cancer surgeon increases costs dramatically. So for all those reasons, it, it is very, very important to identify the presence of, of ovarian cancer um, early ahead of the surgery. Um, we've already completed two 200 patient studies with the best in class um, results far outperforming current um, uh, laboratory techniques to detect ovarian cancer with an area under the curve of over 95% accuracy. We're currently running a clinical verification study with the University of Rochester Wilmot Cancer Center, uh, which is due to complete at the second half of this year. If successful, we will then offer this um, ovarian cancer detection test in our clinical laboratories as a laboratory developed test. The ovarian cancer market is a very large market in its own right, uh, over $1.7 billion uh, available to us. It's important for um, our commercialization that we pursue a partnership of, uh, approach. Our cancer, um, our cancer circulating tumor cell technology can be married with existing medtech companies' um, techniques in order to expand the, their sales potential. So whereas they can currently sell for tissue biopsy, it can be expanded to sell 
multiple times if you can repeat um, their tests with a blood test. So we're working with those companies. We're working with pharma companies uh, to enable precision medicines and with clinical laboratories and CROs for, for revenue generation. And the screening companies in CTDNA, we can work with them as well to classify uh, whether it's clinically relevant cancer or not. So in summary, we have a world leading position in the liquid biopsy um, market. We have the prospect of FDA clearance and we've got a well-defined commercial plan um, which is well supported with peer reviewed papers. We're partnering with many major cancer centers as shown on this slide. So thank you very much for your attention. Please do uh, contact us uh, on the email address shown on this slide. We are keen to bring on board um, more US investors. And in fact, already, as I mentioned earlier, our two largest institutional investors are United States investors. Thank you very much for your attention.